Now, when you have an obesity problem, I understand that the fat content can interfere with the absorption of nutrients. Um, so if we are obese, can we still take these nutrients and get the benefit from them? And two, I somebody recommended uh, Sam eat to me some time ago and I used it and my blood pressure went um, low, below normal. Is it something that we can use on a normal basis? Well, let's see. On the absorption of nutrients, you're, you're certainly right. It is difficult to absorb. For instance, the calcium normally used is calcium carbonate with very low absorption, sometimes as low as 3%. So you take 1,000 milligrams, you get 3 milligrams, which is why it's crucially important to take any supplementary nutrients in forms that are easily absorbable and make sure your food has nutrients in it too. You need more than just supplements. And I didn't quite understand. Did you say Sam E? Um, yes. Reduce blood pressure? Yes, Sam E. I, I took it and I went to the, the, my doctor. I, I, did, I had just completed a surgery. Somebody recommended Sam E to keep me calm and relaxed. And uh, upon going to the doctor, he tested uh -huh. my blood pressure and uh, it was very low. I have not oh, heard oh, the side effect of Sam E. Uh, and obviously, it sounds like you should discontinue that one. I thought I did. Oh, uh, sorry, everybody. We have. I said, it says you're, you're yeah, viewing John Blake. Blake. Hang on one second there, uh, Steve. We'll get this fixed okay. um, hmm. Dr. Mills? Dr. Mills? Okay, I think we got it fixed. Excellent. Um, sorry for the confusion there. And uh, Monty, if you're still with us, we have Monty here still, and we still have Steve Blake. So, Steve, if you want to go ahead, thank you. Well, I think uh, we finished it. If, if Sammy does, if, many studies have used Sammy, and undesirable side effects are very rare. People don't seem to drop out of the studies because of low blood pressure. But if that is an idiosyncratic effect of it on you, then of course you should. Uh, stop it. Unless, of course, you have high blood pressure and want to get it to a better range. <laughs> Perfect. Thank, thank you so much for that. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and unmute Ainsley for our next question. Hi, Ainsley. Hi. Hi, everybody. Dr. Ainsley Amarali from Trinidad, another Caribbean island like yourself. Um, I'm amazed that you did not mention anything about saffron the saffron threads that, you know, it's, I mean, I mean, we normally buy the Persian saffron here and it's supposed to be so good for our minds. What's your view on that? I have read tons of research on saffron and saffron, especially research from Iran. They seem to do a lot of good research on saffron there. And it is tremendously helpful for many things we had to limit what we could use in our trial. So I wasn't able to throw in everything that was good for the brain and the body. And certainly saffron is amazing, although it's really quite expensive too. Uh, so while it is helpful for many conditions, and I've seen it actually for, used for many conditions, we did not include it in our trial, but uh, small amounts that you can afford, uh, especially to color uh, food bright yellow, uh, really helpful for your health and your mind. I agree. Thanks, Steve. Thank you very much. Up next, we have Joel A. Joel, I'm going to unmute you now. Hi, Joel. Hello. Uh, thank you, Dr. Blake. I appreciated your thorough uh, statement. I did have a question, though. Uh, one of them, I'm looking online at a study that was released in 2011 that was done by both the National Cancer Institute and the uh, NIH, National Institute of Health. And in that study, they cited that, uh, they actually stopped the study due to some problems that were occurring with taking vitamin E supplements. Uh, the study uh, showed a 17% increase in prostate cancer among the 35,000 men that were part of the study. So I know that you had talked about, you know, real versus fake vitamin E. I guess my question is, how can we in the lay public uh, make determinations about what is safe vitamin E? And is this a real risk that we should be concerned about with the potential of prostate cancer? Uh, Joel, thank you for your question. Uh, you're quite right. Um, they did use vitamin E in the fake form in that study and so many others. It's really quite rare to find real vitamin E used in a study because it costs a lot more and because a lot of scientists aren't trained in vitamins and minerals. Uh, medical school doesn't 
have courses on vitamins and minerals. I've been trying to get my textbook in there, but so far, no luck at all. Uh, so how can you find out which vitamin E is real and not? Current labeling guidelines by the FDA uh, require real vitamin E to be labeled RRR-alpha-tocopherol. And you will see that on the brain and body food label. And that is how it's designated. The other forms of vitamin E are generally derived from food and not synthesized. So it's the, it's the RRR you wanna look for. If, if it says DL, you don't know, it's probably synthetic almost for sure. And it, no matter what it says, if it doesn't say RRR-alpha-tocopherol, it is what seven eighths fake. And this can be harmful. As I mentioned, this vitamin E is protecting your prostate too. And if it's fake vitamin E that doesn't protect it, it's not protecting it. I know of no instance where food derived vitamin E has caused any problems like that or real vitamin E. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.